Welcome everyone to tonight's meeting of the Burlington City Council. Today is Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. One note, uh, Council Member Ward will be joining us a few minutes late this evening. So when he enters, just FYI. I'd like to take a moment to ask everyone to please silence all electronic devices. For tonight's invocation, we call on Council Member Harold Owen. Spare hands, please. <clears throat> As we enter this new year, Lord, please be with us as we, as a council, represent our citizens. And honestly, we need to remember we represent our citizens and give us the vision and the sometimes the strength to make the right decision uh, for our people and who live in our communities. Um, in light of yesterday's Martin Luther King holiday function, uh, let us in indeed uh, understand that people of of different backgrounds and different issues and let us work with each other to make our community safer and more livable for all involved. Uh, in your name we pray, amen. Amen. Uh, we have a special set of guests this evening. I'd like to recognize some of the Cub Scouts from Cub Scout Pack number one are here this evening. And as I understand it, they're here with the Pause for Action program. Do y'all want to tell us a little about what you're learning in the community and why you're here tonight? <laughs> yeah. You're going to learn about government? Excellent. <clears throat> well, if you stick around, I think we'll have a little special gift for you and we'll give you a, a tour of City Hall if you'd like. So we appreciate y'all joining us this evening for our City Council meeting. And you're in good company with some fellow Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Eagle Scouts. Um, at this time, we've got a special report. It's our auditor's report for fiscal year 2018 and 2019, presented by Stout Stewart, McGowan, and King. At this time, we'll recognize Peggy Reese. Thank you, Council, for the opportunity to appear before you tonight. It is uh, with pleasure that I introduce two individuals who really need no introduction. Patricia Rhodes and Tom McGowan are here from Stout Stewart, McGowan, and King, and they are here to deliver the audit report on at fiscal year 2018-2019 and um, as they work for you. Welcome. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for allowing us to be here uh, to discuss the audit report for the year ending June 30th, 2019. Uh, we are, like Peggy said, we are here reporting to you tonight because as auditors, we work for you, the council. Uh, that's why all of our audit uh, reports that are in the, uh, in the report are addressed to you, the council. Um, we work with the city staff on the audit. Uh, this report was submitted to the local government commission for their review, which is required by all governmental units every year. This report was prepared in the prescribed format of the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. Uh, the, re the summary financial information is in the front of the report, and as you continue through the report, more detail is shown. The Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR, for June 30th, 2019 was prepared by the City of Burlington Finance staff. The sections of the CAFR that are actually prepared by Stout, Stewart, McGowan, and King are the audit opinion letter on Roman numeral page 12, and in the compliance section in the back, the report on internal control over financial reporting on page 167, the report on compliance for each major federal program on page 169, and the report on compliance for each major state program on page 171. On Roman numeral page nine, the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting uh, has been received by the city uh, for June 30th, 2018. And this marks the 20th consecutive year that the award has been received by the city which is a great accomplishment due to all the recent reporting changes for pension and other post-employment benefits. As stated in our opinion letter on Roman numeral page 12, the statements are the responsibility of management. They are also responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Our responsibility as auditors is to express an opinion on the statements based on our audit. 
and our audit was conducted in, in, in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. The opinion that we are rendering on the financial statements is an unmodified opinion, which is the best and cleanest opinion that can be received. The management's discussion and analysis, which starts on Roman numeral page 15, is an excellent overall summary of this very expansive and detailed report. It contains financial highlights, financial analysis and economic factors, and budget highlights for 2020. Some new schedules that appear in this year's report that were not in last year's are the capital project schedules of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance for the Denzel Carousel Restoration Project Fund on page 116 and the North Park Pool Project Fund on page 117. The overall citywide tax collection rate for the 2018 taxes was 98.66%, which is an excellent collection rate. Um, in the compliance section in the back of the report on pages 176 and 177, there's a list of grant monies that were expended during the year. And you can see it's a pretty expansive list. Um, as part of our audit, we do consider internal control. We do not express an opinion on the internal control, but we do cons consider it when we're determining, determining appropriate audit procedures. As part of our consideration of internal control, nothing came to our attention that we were required to report to you as a material weakness or a significant deficiency. If something had come to our attention, we would have reported this to you in a separate letter. I think you did receive a, a three-page, no, okay, <laughs> okay, it's fine. Uh, uh, we did issue another, uh, a separate three-page letter, which is a required communication to the council as part of our professional standards. And it's a letter about our audit. Uh, and it just, uh, just to summarize what's in the letter, um, it states that uh, we have not encountered any difficulties with management while we were performing our audit, nor did we have any disagreements with management over any accounting, uh, reporting, or auditing matters. Uh, we continue to work with finance uh, staff on the implementation of any new governmental accounting standard board statements that are issued and the effects that they might have on future financial reporting for the city of Burlington. And there's some that are coming, you know, down the pike here pretty soon that, that probably will affect um, uh, the reporting and the looks of the reports. And so we're, uh, Peggy and I follow pretty closely um, those things that are, that are coming about. Um, are there any questions for me? Thank you. Any questions from council? Okay. Well, we'd like to thank Harden, Peggy, and all the city staff for their assistance with the audit. And uh, thank you to the council, again, for allowing us to be the independent audit firm for the city. We are local and available anytime for any questions that the council may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your work, and we appreciate having a resource like y'all right here in town. Right. Any other comments on this presentation? Mayor, if I, if I could, yeah. uh, the, uh, since I know we're in the midst of looking at some, some fairly substantial capital projects, um, if, if staff could help us, uh, over the last five years, a, a history of where we are with capital reserves, um, especially on you know, general funds, when I'm looking, really looking to get more than, than a... Uh, utility fund. I know we started with the fire station number six and probably 14 or 15, which that was financed, I believe, out of, uh, out of reserves. And then just what's been the process since then and, and where are we now at some point in time to give us an overview in terms of, you know, looking forward to the other projects that we've got to make some decisions on. Okay, we'll do. Any other questions from council? All right. This time we recognize our interim city clerk, Beverly Smith. Members of council, it's my responsibility to remind you of your duty to avoid conflicts of interest. I ask if there are any potential conflicts concerning tonight's agenda items. Done. Okay.
before council is the agenda. Do I hear a motion to adopt that agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Agenda has been adopted. Next is our consent agenda. These items are typically non-controversial. If anyone has any questions, please let us know. Item A, to approve Budget Amendment 2020-19 for animal services to use donations received between July 1st, 2019 and December 31st, 2019 to fund the medical care of animals. Item B, to approve Budget Amendment 2020-20 for Burlington Police Department to use funds received from insurance proceeds to acquire pre-owned uh, Sprinter van for the evidence unit. Do I hear a motion to approve the foregoing consent agenda items? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion has been approved. Next, we have one item of new business this evening. City Council will consider approving amendments to wastewater agreements between the City of Burlington and the Town of Elon and the Town of Gibsonville to allow the Town of Elon to accept flow from the Town of Gibsonville at additional connection points, including the Travis Creek Pump Station. This time we recognize Water Resources Director Bob Patterson. Welcome, Thank Bob. you, Mayor and Council. Um, tonight we have um, before you uh, agree, uh, amendments to two of our agreements with um, our surrounding towns that we provide wastewater service to, um, Elon and Gibsonville. In November of 2019, Elon and Gibsonville worked on a uh, annexation line of agreement, uh, renewal or modification that extended their line of agreement up Gibsonville Ossipy Road. As part of that agreement, um, Gibsonville previously or currently um, has a pump station um, that is known as the Travis Creek Pump Station and a force main. Both uh, wastewater flow from both towns go to that pump station. Gibsonville owns and operates it and bills Elon. Um, and the wastewater is transmitted to our collection system and we, we bill Gibsonville. Um, as part of that agreement, they've negotiated that Elon will purchase the um, pump station and force main from Gibsonville and take over ownership and maintenance of that. Um, our agreements do not allow um, municipalities to um, serve other municipalities without Burlington's permission. So these two modifications essentially allow that, that exchange. So um, whereas formerly Gibsonville built Elon, and we built Gibsonville, now the, the uh, arrangement will be Gibsonville will be built by Elon and we will be billing we will be billing Elon. There's no change in the volume of flow or the physical infrastructure. It's just a, a changing really in the billing procedures and who owns that pump station. Thank you. Any questions from council? All right. Do I hear a motion regarding this item? I move we approve the amendments to the wastewater agreements between the city of Burlington, the town of Elon, and the town of Gibsonville. Second. Any questions regarding the motion to approve? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is passed. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. That concludes our regular agenda items. We have no public comment this evening. Uh, this time we'll have council comments. Begin that. Pardon if I could recognize you to give us a brief update on minor league baseball. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, now, I'll keep my comments brief. So we have, uh, the council members have been informed and aware of the effort where Major League Baseball has proposed uh, eliminating 42 teams. Um, that remains, uh, that proposal is still out there for Major League Baseball. That would, does not affect the 2020 season. This would affect the agreement between Minor League Baseball and Major League Baseball for the 2021 season. So everything's status quo for 2020 if you get to get those questions. Um, there have been a number of things, which I'll recap uh, for you, that have been occurring. So back in last fall, we had 100 members of Congress, over 100 members of Congress, both parties. It was about equally split uh, uh, from both parties, signed a letter <coughs> urging them to drop this proposal that was sent to the Commissioner of Baseball back in the fall. Representative Walker signed on to that. Representative Bud signed on to that. And Representative Price, obviously Representative Walker represents us. But then uh, Representative Bud also was interested from the Greensboro baseball. And then uh, we also reached out to Representative Price uh, and also Durham reached out to him as well. So we're happy that all three of them were supportive at that time. Uh, the next sort of big action step, there were discussions at the winter baseball meetings back in December between the negotiating teams between both sides. We have not gotten a lot of concrete 
that nobody took notes and brought those to us, but they did have a substantial uh, number of conversations and meetings. Uh, what is happening now, uh, the next effort, and what I want to speak to you for just a moment about, is there's an effort to seek resolutions uh, from both houses, of both the House and the Senate, and working on that now. So we got that material late last week from minor league baseball, and we'll have that for you to look at in February um, to talk through that, and we'll go ahead and start working with our two, uh, with our folks from both um, the House and the Senate. And they've also asked that we consider some a local resolution. So you'll see that in February, the February meeting as well. Uh, some of the major uh, points is that, again, they're trying to do a bipartisan, uh, find bipartisan support both in the House and the Senate for this resolution uh, and get folks to sign on as co-sponsors. You know, and again, if you look at it from a national level, you're talking about thousands of jobs around the country. You're talking about preserving the legacy and influence of something that, uh, you know, if you look back to the history of minor league baseball, that goes back for decades uh, across America. And then um, I think one of the things that obviously is appealing to us is that it's affordable, family-friendly entertainment, and that happens in lots of small towns across the country, medium-sized towns across the country, and it just, it's just kind of baffling that that would go away. Um, some, of the, some of the statistics that minor league baseball has provided us, if you look at this nationwide, there were 41 million people that attended minor league baseball games uh, last year, and, and their average attendance over the last 15 years is over 40 million. Uh, they point out that minor league baseball attendance grew 2.6% last year, uh, whereas minor, major league baseball attendance dropped 1.6%. And that communities, if you look across the entire nation, uh, since 2003, communities have spent $911 million to improve facilities. And so one of the things that you keep hearing from Major League Baseball as they speak to the media uh, is the condition of facilities. They do have standards, and Harold can tell you about this, Mr. Laws can tell you about this. They come around once every five years and evaluate your stadium and give you a list of what you need to improve. So that's happening, and if the teams wanted to you know, enforce that, they have the tools already in place. So the, the facilities question is, it doesn't really it doesn't really add up that they keep making that point and you all know here locally if you look very specific to our example we invested about 1.3 million in our stadium prior to last season for a total upgrade of all the fan uh the fan uh, facing elements the, the royals have told us that we have the second best infield in the entire kansas city royals system uh the best one being kaufman stadium in kansas city and number two was right here so doing an upgrade, about $300,000 upgrade to our outfield this year, and our outfield will be up to that same standard as our infield. So the facilities argument doesn't line up, and you all know we've invested a couple hundred thousand every year with, with stadium improvements, fixing the clubhouse, uh, things like that through the years. So that one doesn't add up either. It's just it's a little baffling for us. So just want to let you know that there's going to be a concerted effort over the next couple of weeks to reach out to uh, members of Congress uh, here and across the country, and um, it, the story. It, there's there's national stories being written about this. You've seen that. We've actually been contacted uh, by someone who's working on a book, actually, which is a little unusual. Uh, and uh, this late this afternoon, we were actually contacted by the uh, Associated Press. So it's it's gaining sort of a, a national. It's becoming a national story very quickly. Uh, but we'll be uh, in touch with you between now and um, the February council meeting, and uh, you'll see some, some draft resolution language, and then we may ask your help in asking our senators um, and our members of Congress to sign, sign on. You know, ironically, this thing comes fits the Houston model uh, from the general manager and ownership of the Astros in terms of a cost-saving concept. Um, you know, that being said, What's happened to Houston in the last few weeks is not the uh, greatest thing for uh, their uh, franchise, but it's this design, uh, frankly, to save money. Uh, that's what it is. So it'd be interesting to see you know, what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it really is hard to, to understand the logic. Any council questions? Mr. May I apologize for being late. I'm particularly sorry because I, the audit is one of my favorite things each year. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's always exciting. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, 
I'm sorry. I apologize to Tom and Patricia. But. Any other council comments? I have a couple updates and events that I want to remind folks of. I do want to thank everyone who helped out with our Sister Cities program this year. We had 20 students. Uh, we hosted them at our last council meeting. They left on Friday with tears of, uh, of sadness to leave our community. They appreciate their time getting to know the residents of Burlington and Alamance County. Uh, and a lot of them spoke about the desire to return and visit in the future. So we're always excited to host those students, but it takes the hard work of lots of volunteers, host families, and our Burlington Alamance Sister Cities Committee. So we appreciate everyone who helped out with that program. Uh, this was the eighth year that we hosted students through that. Also coming up February 1st, we have an e-waste drive. This is one of two drives that we host annually. So if you're looking to do some very early spring cleaning, um, we'll, you'll be able to drop off e-waste at the Public Works Department over at 234 East Summit uh, from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. on February 1st. We also have some vacancies on the Public Transportation Advisory Committee and the Burlington Housing Authority. So for citizens looking to get active and help uh, steer the future of our community, those are two great committees who are very active in our city. And uh, we need your leadership to help continuing to guide the city. You can apply online. The, you can search boards and commissions on the city website. The application form is there. And then those uh, folks will be selected in the coming months. It's adoption time at the shelter, as always, and you can start off 2020 with a new best friend. So for just $20, you can adopt a cat or dog uh, up until January 25th. And then I'll remind folks that February 14th is our city's anniversary. It's also some other holiday, maybe Valentine's Day. Um, but it will be our 127th anniversary. I know there's lots of folks who uh, appreciate the connection between our city's anniversary and Valentine's Day, and I know there's some events being planned for downtown. So definitely keep an eye on the calendar and ways to love your city, love those around you, uh, and share this uh, wonderful community sentiment that we have here. And lastly, it is 2020, and 2020 is a census year. So I'll remind folks that the census is coming up very soon. Uh, it'll be on April 1st. You'll start to get mailings in February and early March with information about the census. And they are still looking for census workers who are looking. So if you're interested in helping the community out, helping uh, guide the nation and how we, we steer our community forward, you can sign up to be a paid census worker. There's more information at census2020.gov. So that's all of my announcements. Anything else? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed. Thank you, everyone. And if y'all want to stick around.